is that we're a Mac-based facility. Uh, if you had Command-I on your hard drive, I would definitely recommend that you format your drive. If you're going to work into school exclusively, format this drive to be Mac OS uh, extended here, right? So make sure that you have a Mac formatted drive. That's the first thing. Second thing, make sure you have enough storage on your drive to work on your project. If you have very little storage, don't expect to be able to do anything or write new media to it. Also, name your hard drive something you need. So when you get a new hard drive, don't just use the kind of generic name that it comes with. Everyone buys a similar set of drives, and that's also going to be an issue when you try to go from station to station. And also, it's easier to track down. So name your hard drive and also put some kind of label on your physical hard drive so we can trace it back to you, maybe even a phone number. Right? So first, you're going to make space. So if this is your MOS project, perhaps, on your, on your hard drive, right? MOS Media. Or you, maybe you have your project is called something specific. So MOS Media or Production Workshop to be even more specific. PW Production Workshop 1 Media. Here's your Canon. This is the card. This is an SD card. Make sure you have an SD card reader. Take the entire content of the folder. Don't break things out. Don't look through your iPhoto or something like that and start taking streams out. Take this entire folder and put it onto your external hard drive. This is your backup. In case you lose the footage, you can always use your backup and then save this if you're really keen on keeping your footage, save this onto another drive that you're going to use. So I'm putting this onto my main drive here, and this is a drive that I'm going to use to ingest the footage. Depending on the size of your media, how much media you took, this may take a little longer, depends. Once you have successfully copied the media, you should see the same folder here. And I always kind of check to make sure that the content I copied is the same amount of data. So you don't walk away or format the card and you didn't get everything. So just double check and then you can start Media Composer. If you're done with the card, you can just always eject drive and work off of this drive. We're going to show two different versions of an ingest. We're going to do one that's ingesting to your external drive and then one that's to the server. They're a little bit different, but what we're going to try to do first is just make sure that we have the two versions. Open Media Composer. In this first example, I will not use the server at all. I will just use external drives. This is the first example. So here's my project window. We have different user profiles. This is very important. When you do any external projects, which is everything you do really here at school, we're not going to use private or shared. Always go to external, and you're going to set up the location where your project is going to be saved. So in this case, I'm saving it to my hard drive, my post hard drive. I'm going to create a new folder and call it Media Composer. Okay. If you do the same thing on the server, you would have your name and the class you're in, but that's something separate we're gonna look at possibly later. But now I have Media Composer Projects. This is just the path that I want to save it to. Right here, the folder, this is where I want to save this project to. That's my drive. Okay. New project. This is where I set the project format and the dimensions and all the different settings. So I think it's best to always keep a consistent naming convention. Do my name. This is what we're using at school, 1080p, and our frame rate is 24 frames a second, 23976. Progressive scan, don't do anything else here, right? Don't change anything here, and the color space should be as above here. And you see it created this project here inside of this, right? And actually, if you look into my new Media Composer Projects folder, you see it created this folder with the actual project and, and some other files. I prefer to, and Media Composer creates the projects for me. So I don't go in and change the names, etc. If I do not like the name of this project and I change the folder, we're going to have an issue, but I'm going to go through that in detail in another video. But for now, this is my project. I'm going to say, okay, Media Composer is going to open and read all my settings. Okay, so now, so you have your source and record window, and automatically it creates this bin named my project folder here, right? So I would do, if this is my MOS, you know, you had dailies, you might have day one, day two, etc. You would organize it accordingly. Whatever whatever way is gonna make more sense to you. It might be dailies that you're reviewing or 
the more organized you are in your bin, the easier it's going to be to find things in your project or, or maybe hand over a project to someone else. A disorganized project is not a very pleasant thing for someone else to edit, right? So here I'm going to go and say maybe day one media. We're not dealing with audio right now. There'll be a separate video. But so here's my day one media here. So if you go into your bin and in a Mac, you right click on the mouse, you see input and you see your source browser. This is where I'm going to find the media that I was that I just put on my drive. Okay. And in this specific case, we're using the C100 camera. So here I go. Here's my post. Uh, that's my drive. And here's my PW1 MOS media. You can also do it here. Select the folder, and we're going to link to the footage. You can now see on the side here, uh, we got about 10 clips. There's a little bit more here as well. It basically shows me the drive that I took this from, you know, what the folder is, and, and this entire path. So if I've successfully linked to the media, this is my first step right now, I can see it here. I can actually go ahead and edit these clips as well. So I have this media that I can now use to edit right off of the clips. A recommended workflow for Avid Media Composer is to now either A, use them like this with linked footage, pay attention to the symbol here in the bin. You see how you have sort of like an old uh, film with two kind of links to it. Looks like chain links there. That means it's looking for these files in this location. If I were to change this name of the folder where they sit, I would then get this media offline. Because now it's, it's looking for it in PWS1 MOS media, but it can no longer see it because the name is changed. So you have some options. You can actually go back and, and change the name of the folder, and it may relink to it. But now it's lost it altogether. Then you have to basically go back into your source browser and find it again. So a lot of times when you're trying to sort through, we have a more detailed media offline video coming up. So that that would basically be more in depth on what you can do to troubleshoot this. So recommended workflow is actually to to now go ahead and uh, make these MXF files. This is basically Avid Media Composers proprietary you know files that use and to organize it in their structure so what you're going to do is you can hit command a to select all the clips you always make sure you highlight the bin you're in if i'm over here in the project bin if i hit command a it doesn't really do anything or over here as well you need to be in the bin this needs to be in the front of you right here right so you click inside of it and you highlight all the clips and you can see that I have about 10 clips now they're all blue and what the advantage of this as well is if you start to sort through the linked clips and you put those clips sort of in a trash bin they're still part of the projects linking to my drive but they're not really um i'm not transcoding them or and i'm not moving them into an avid media files folder um and the separate thing before we actually start to transcode these if you hit command five you will get to the media creation aspect of this. And here you can find out what your resolution is here. So this was important, we're actually in the wrong resolution. The DNX HD 36 is recommended. So I select that and everything should follow, except for capture. Capture has to do with camera. So we're not really gonna be worried about that. Video resolution up here and then your video drive right here. So what I have available to me is um, we should actually filter out the system drive. Currently, I just have my personal hard drive here. And this is basically only applies to external drives right now. We're going to talk about uh, on the server what you do for that as well. So this means I'm making all of my clips DNX HD 36. I want them to first point to my hard drive. Then I select all my clips. I go to consolidate transcode 
I click on that. Here I will have consolidate or transcode. We're going to transcode this media. It's going to show you the available drives here on the left hand side. And I want to select video and audio on the same drive. Click on that. Okay. I, it's saying I have 10 clips selected. I want to use this frame rate um, in this video resolution and nothing else really I need to change here. If I have other adapters or, or frame flex on the clips, it will bake them into these transcodes. Right now I don't need to do that. I don't need to touch this audio sample rate or an audio bit depth unless I've done something to it. If I run this in the background, it's basically going to run in the background, but I'm going to show you that for another clip. And then you're hitting transcode. Transcode means I'm taking these linked clips and I create new media. And then we're also going to look real quick. This is my hard drive here. I told it to write on the hard drive. So we're gonna, you're gonna show, I'm going to show you what happens once it's written that media. Right now, there's not an avid media files here folder. If I hit transcode. Okay, so it looks like we have um, successfully transcoded our files. Um, and we created new media here. We kept the old linked files here. So what you can do if you wanted to keep them, you could just create a new bin and call this uh, linked media or anything that's going to help you organize linked media. As I said, you can always go back to it and you can even trash it if you like. Um, so this is transcoded media. That means that I've basically made this into MXF files. You see how the drive changed. It looks at this post HD drive here. Okay, so we're going to go out now and look at what it did on my external hard drive. So inside of my hard drive now, we have a new folder. It's called Avid Media Files. There's an MXF folder here, and it creates the number one, right? So this is what it did. It created all of these clips. You notice that based on the clips, I have a V01 and two audio files. It basically took the media that I have and broke it up into separate streams, one video file, and in this case, two audio files. If you have a different camera, you may have four audio streams. It basically creates separate streams for uh, your clip. It also creates these two database files, okay? They are very important, so do not just trash them or get rid of them somehow because these are keeping track of all of your, your, your database structure of this folder, right? You don't really need to, unless there's a problem, and you can please, please look at our media offline solutions, you shouldn't need to do anything in here. This is what it created for a new project. If you have multiple projects on the same, uh, on your same hard drive, you may see other numbered folders in here, right? But here are my clips now. Uh, these are my clips, uh, clips associated with this project. This for C100 camera.